So the first area, we'll spend a few minutes on the politics, because that's the most fascinating, and that's the one that we can make the biggest changes in by changing our lawmakers, if we would just be willing to vote pro-life. You know, the bumper sticker's right. We have that opportunity. And if we know the voting record, um, we know who to vote for. Doesn't matter what party it is, although the party of the Democrats, unfortunately, has been very much the party of death, sadly. Um, many, at the national level, it's almost impossible to find a pro-life Democratic senator or representative. There are a few, but not so many. And so I've been interested in how the party of the New Deal, the party of the, you know, the worker, the party that I grew up with, my whole family was Democrat. I never voted for a Republican until I was an adult, much older. Um, my husband was a Republican, and when I first met him 40 years ago, uh, my parents were concerned because he was a Republican. They said, <laughs> they thought it was okay he was Catholic, but he's a Republican. And I really didn't have any interest in Democrat or Republican. I didn't really know the difference. I was kind of ignorant at 19. And I just fell in love with him. And then eventually moved to the Republican Party. But then I realized, I'm so glad I left that party because it was all about abortion. It was becoming all about abortion. And I found that very sad. And they sway so many of us. You know the, Young people who want to be liberal, or at least progressive, tend to move to that party, and they're surrounded by a pro-choice message. But the sad thing is, that didn't happen until the 1960s. Almost all of the Democratic big guys that you know of today, <clears throat> including Bill Clinton, they were all pro-life. Bill Clinton was pro-life. Ted Kennedy was pro-life. Al Gore was pro-life. Some of the big guys in the party Jesse Jackson was pro-life. In fact, my book here, I wrote a book called The Politics of Abortion, which identifies who used to be um, pro-life. And it's shocking to look at um, the list. And the Catholic Church, sadly, had something to do with some of these pro-life people becoming pro-choice. And I looked closely at the Kennedy family. In 1964, the Kennedys were all very much pro-life. They were a strong Catholic family. And then all of a sudden, the country started moving toward abortion. And Bobby Kennedy was going was to run for a Senate seat in New York. And New York was beginning to embrace abortion. Not because it was good for women, the people who were promoting abortion had no interest in helping women. Larry Later and Bernard Nathanson, they were all about money. And there was a lot of money to be made in those days. So in order to run for office, they were convincing men and women that the best thing they could do would be to be pro-choice. And Bobby Kennedy had a dilemma because they're a Catholic family, they wanted to get Catholic votes. So I write about this meeting they had in 1964 in a long forgotten meeting at the Kennedy compound in Hyannisport on a hot summer day in 64. The Kennedy family and their advisors and allies were coached by leading theologians and Catholic college professors to accept and promote abortion with a clear conscience. Albert Johnson, a former Jesuit, now he's a bioethics professor, recalled how this happened. In 1964, Jesuit priest Father Joseph Fuchs, renowned Catholic moral theologian and a professor at the Gregorian University in Rome, was among the guest faculty of an ethics course I was teaching at the summer session at U University of San Francisco, my husband's alma mater. Walking across campus one morning, Father Fuchs hailed me and told me that he had received a phone call inviting him to join several other leading theologians in a meeting with Senator Ted Kennedy and the Kennedy family in Hyannisport. Robert Kennedy was running for the New York Senate seat, and the Kennedy family and their political advisors wished to discuss the position that a Catholic politician should take on abortion. Two days later, the distinguished German theologian and I, the American novice, this is Albert Johnson, um, traveled to Cape Cod to join Catholic theologians, Father Robert Drinan, then the dean of Boston Law School, 
Father Richard McCormick, Father Charles Curran, and a bishop whose name I do not recall. Our <laughs> I think he did recall, but he didn't want to say. Our colloquium at Hyannisport was influenced by Jesuit Father John Courtney Murray's position and reached the conclusion that Catholic politicians in a democratic polity might advocate legal restrictions on abortion, but in so doing might tolerate legislation that would permit abortion if political efforts to repress this moral error led to greater perils to social peace and order. This position, which of course is much more nuanced, nuanced than that, seems to have informed the politics of the Kennedys. And it was from that meeting that a lot of Catholic politicians got permission to support abortion, to support laws that would allow abortion, even while remaining personally opposed. Thank you.